Hey there, Theater Universe. Playwright Kui Gwyn here, uh, popping on to help celebrate the 10-year anniversary of my show, She Kills Monsters. To help commemorate this occasion, I thought I'd give you the secret origins on why I wrote this play in the first place. Uh, if you've never seen or read the show, of course, you can pick up a copy at ConcordTheatricals.com. Uh, the origin of She Kills Monsters goes all the way back to the 80s, when I met my childhood best friend Chuck Price, the kid who the character Chuck Biggs from the play is based on. I met him because when I was small, my English wasn't so good. Uh, you know, my parents being Vietnamese refugees, this wasn't our first language, so we all learned how to speak uh, by the you know blue-collar folks around us. Meaning, uh, we all thought that expletives were natural modifiers for you know description words. All of that thing's big, that thing's bigger, that thing's the fucking biggest. Um, this is how I spoke all the time, even as a little kid, uh, even at school in front of my teachers. So my parents would often get this report. You know, Queen's doing great in you know his classes, but his language is really, really terrible. And my parents, with English not being their first language, their assumption wasn't that I was swearing, but that my literal language, a la English, was literally terrible. So they never really corrected my swearing. They just told me to speak better and just kind of let it be. Uh, of course, that just meant I kept swearing, kept getting in trouble. That is until my best friend Chuck finally stopped me to tell me, hey man, you gotta stop saying that word. That word is quote unquote a bad word. It's offensive. It's like, oh man, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend anybody. What is it, like racist or something? He's like, no, no, man. It's not anything like that. Oh, is it like sexist? Oh no. Homophobic? No. Is it like sacrilegious? No, not, not that either. Then how is it offensive exactly? And his response was basically, I don't know, man. A whole bunch of boring people got together and said these words are bad because, you know, English can't evolve or ever be interesting. If anyone has ever read any of my other plays, you know that I took this piece of advice very seriously. Chuck then became basically my tour guide into everything that was Americana. Uh, he introduced me to everything I love, comic books, sci-fi, the B-movie section to Video Land and Video Giant. He even introduced me to playwriting. See, he was a year older than me, and he used to write all these comedy sketches uh, for his class. Uh, you know, they were all super topical. You know, school lunches, barf. School lunches made out of barf. From the perspective of 10-year-old Kui, this material was golden, and I desperately wanted to be in these shows. And I got to be in one once, and I still remember it to this day. It was about uh, a group of yuppies. It was the 80s. We like making fun of yuppies, you know, punching up, as it were. Uh, it was about these yuppies fighting over their yachts. And I had one line. I was supposed to run on the stage and yell out, I don't give a ship. Obviously, this was a play on words. I, of course, ran in and yelled out. Instead, I don't give a, and said the actual word. Of course, I got into trouble. But in that moment, something amazing happened. Everyone in the class stood up and started to cheer and laugh and hooped and hollered. And I immediately became addicted. This, whatever this was, was something I wanted to do for the rest of my life. I had suddenly, in that moment, found my path. Chuck also introduced me to Dungeons and Dragons, which was no easy task. Uh, at that age, I loved sports. I loved playing football and basketball and things outdoors. But Chuck, being the very smart DM that he was, uh, did this. He uh, turned all the monsters in the game based on, he would base all those monsters on all the bullies in my life, the people that were giving me a hard time. And, you know, when you have a face like this growing up in the Deep South, that material went deep. And he also made all the maidens in the game, all the, you know, princesses I had to save based on the girls that I had actual crushes on, which led to more than one occasion of me, like, looking at Chuck deep into his eyes and saying things like, I like you. I mean, I like you, like you. I mean, I know you're like dating the second string prince of the JV Demon Squad, but you know, if that doesn't work out, I would love to bring you out to have like a cup of non-alcoholic mead, if you know what I'm saying. That would be like all that in a bag of chips. It was the 90s. I said weird stuff. Um, but that's all to say, this game of Dungeons & Dragons was way more than a game. It was a group of awkward teenagers sitting around a table talking about their fears, their feelings, the things that they loved sex. We talked a lot about sex. It was us growing up, a group of a black, Asian, and one white kid, all sharing our unique perspective of the world to each other. We became brothers, and this was literally one of the best times of my life. But then, of course, high school came, and girlfriends, and, you know, parties, and eventually I moved out of town to go to college, and honestly, 
Chuck and I lost touch. The last time I saw him was at a gas station right outside my neighborhood uh, in the summer of 2001. We immediately caught up. We were in our early 20s, and Chuck wanted to tell me all about uh, his baby girl who was just born. And I told him all about grad school and about playwriting and one day wanting to be a screenwriter. And he asked me if I wanted to go get a beer. But in that moment, I told him I couldn't because, you know, I was literally at that moment driving out of town to what seemed to me uh, to be a very important theater internship in Philadelphia. And he said, you know, no problem, man. You know, I just want to tell you, and he said this to me, uh, I'm proud of you. I love you. And I just want you to make a big noise in the big city so I can hear it one day. And I told him, well, yo, man, next time I'm back in town, I promise to get that beer with him. Truth is, we never got that beer. Because as the years followed, uh, I got entrenched in trying to become a writer in New York City, and he, of course, got entrenched with being a dad. And in 2006, at the opening night of my very first off-Broadway show, I got a call from his cousin to tell me that Chuck had passed away from leukemia. I had never even knew he was ever sick. If there's any regret I have in my life, it's that I never got that beer. That I never got to tell Chuck to his face, thank you. Thank you for being my friend. Thank you for changing my life. Thank you for literally introducing me to everything that I love. Thank you for showing me and helping me find the path of what I would become to this day. Thank you for making me the man that I am. And I'm sorry that I never got that beer. So in 2011, when I finally got to write, she Kills Monsters. I wrote it in honor of him, as well as a group of another, another group of my friends, who I'm not going to name for their privacy, who all became incredible women that I admire to this day. But it was only supposed to be a two-month run. A spiritual thank you, uh, a big noise in a big city for my best friend in heaven to hear. But then something miraculous happened. The show kept getting produced year in and year out by schools across America, across the world until it finally became one of the most produced shows in all the high schools and colleges in America. Thousands of kids have played these roles. Hundreds of kids have brought a best friend, Chuck, back to life on that stage. And all I can think is in those moments, me, Larry, Lamar, Wong Jr., and Chuck are back sitting around my kitchen table with my grandma just an earshot away playing D&D &D again. I never got to tell Chuck thank you to his face. But I don't want to miss my opportunity to thank all of you for making She Kills Monsters what it is. The truth is, this play is more yours now than it is mine. So thank you to everyone who has ever been in it, or made it, or been part of it, or read it, or seen it. Thank you for changing my life. I just want to say, I'm proud of you. I love you, and please make a big noise in the big city one day so I can hear it. Thank you for making me the man I am today. That is the history of She Kills Monsters. Happy anniversary.